Welcome to the Resilient Retail Game Plan, a podcast for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable creative product business with me, Catherine Erdley. The Resilient Retail Game Plan is a podcast dedicated to one thing, breaking down the concepts and tools that I've gathered from 20 years in the retail industry and showing you how you can use them in your business. This is the real nuts and bolts of running a successful product business, broken down in an easy, accessible way. This is not a podcast about learning how to make your business look good. It's the tools and techniques that will make you and your business feel good, confidently plan, launch and manage your products, and feel in control of your sales numbers and cash flow to help you build a resilient retail business. Hi everyone, it's Catherine here. Welcome to another episode of the Resilient Retail Game Plan. Today we are talking all things TikTok with Penny Walker. We are going to be diving into why you should consider getting a TikTok handle even if you never intend to post there and how to get out of a rut if you are on TikTok but you're feeling a bit stuck. Today's episode is jam-packed full of useful information so let's dive in. Thank you so much for joining me today. Do you want to start by introducing yourself and your business? Yep. Hi, Catherine. Thank you for having me. So, hi, I'm Penny, and I'm the founder of Bird Reason Social, which I set up a few years ago. I train Instagram savvy business owners to grow a new audience and make more money on TikTok. I came to TikTok because I used to teach IGTV before Reels were introduced. I love the video format. I love learning through Reels and video. So I started teaching Reels in about June 2020 when it first came out. And then I then I noticed TikTok because it was exploding then. And I thought I just need to see what everyone else is doing. And I was completely hooked and realized quite quickly that I was onto something because there's no one really teaching it. So even when I didn't know much, I still knew a little bit more than everyone else. So that's what I've been doing ever since. And I absolutely love it. It's honestly the best job I could have invented for myself. <laughs> and what was it specifically about TikTok that made you fall in love with it? I liked it because that was all it was, videos, just videos, videos and more videos. It just seems so easy. And it is, it still is. It's, well, we're going to talk about that. It may not seem easy at first, but actually that's all it is. You don't have to do too many things. Okay, excellent. So I know one of the things that we've talked about previously is you always say that even if you're not thinking about getting started on TikTok, you're pretty happy where you are on Instagram, you should still go ahead and get yourself a TikTok account. Why is that? Right. So I encourage everyone to set up a TikTok account, even if you hate it and you think you're never going to post there. And the reason why is because say you go to a conference or you go to a fair and you want to tag someone in because you've seen a product there that you love and you can't because they're not on TikTok. So you Mm -hmm. can't do it. So I feel like you're missing out on user generated content. You're missing out on conversations about your brand you're missing out on being tagged, you're missing out on being recommended. And also by having a TikTok account, even if you're not posting on it, you have an Instagram button on there. So you can push people towards your Instagram, where you have links and your regular posting. And also you can grow followers, even if you're not there. I see, got you. So get it, get it, even if you do nothing with it. Um, I have to say that's also true. I actually have a TikTok account and I haven't done an awful lot with it. And every so often I pop in and I've got my new followers. So <laughs> it's, it's just good it's there, I guess. <laughs> I'd add one thing to that. I mean, I think if you can just pin three videos, introduce yourself, tell everyone where you actually do hang out most of the time and what you do, you could just park it for a bit. That's great advice. So if anyone's listening to this and they're like, oh, I'm not sure, it seems like another big task to take on. Why do you think that people should go ahead and take the plunge and head over to TikTok or at least consider it? Apart from it being really fun. Well, um, <laughs> I think it's it's mostly in the initial stages about being discovered by a new audience. So growing a new audience for your products, growing a new audience uh, for your services so that you can then send that new audience off platform potentially to your email list to your membership to your uh, Shopify your Etsy store or wherever wherever you are doing business and grow your email list and grow your Instagram as well a lot of people find that by being on TikTok they can grow their Instagram really well and then one thing that I think people overlook is that you're really opening yourself up to other opportunities new opportunities because it is a new audience there's people there who don't necessarily hang out where you hang out so there's collabs just meeting other people you could work with, do events with, journalists, influencers, 
that's where you're going to get discovered. I feel more than Instagram at the moment. It's a vibrant platform. And is that because the organic reach is better? If you people can just you're just getting content's been seen by more yeah. people. And also because it is a new audience. Mm, yeah. When we talk about the audience, I know that that one of those things that people always say about TikTok is that it's the younger demographic. But what's your experience been? I know it has shifted a lot over the last couple of years. So I think like all of these platforms, it definitely was the younger demographic. You had the great idea in the first place. But then I think because of lockdown, you know, people were furloughed, left at home and businesses started using it and seeing it as an opportunity for business. And therefore the demographic started shifting. And I think, you know, I'm very much Gen X. I'd say my clients are mostly late millennials and Gen X. Mm. So, you know, we've caught on a bit slower, but there is a big audience there. Um, I think from age 35 upwards, it's almost 50% of TikTok are in that age group. Oh, so wow. it's gen- generation TikTok. Generation <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> so you think that most people probably would be surprised how much of their audience is already there? I think so now. I think there's lots and lots of people hovering and looking and not actually throwing themselves into you. But I think people do reference TikTok a lot. They'll look at it for reels, inspiration, reels, trends, because the TikTok shopping is so very easy and slightly addictive as well. But it's just <laughs> it's just a few clicks through and you're done. And there's just brilliant sort of content creators making videos about products. So there's so many reasons to keep going back, either for your research. I think there's a lot of people still aren't on it. But I think that not everyone chooses to be on Instagram, for example. Some people just went straight in with TikTok. Mm -hmm. And do you think that it's true that people's, one of the the discussions I've been having recently is about where people look for advice. So, for example, if they're looking for a tutorial on something, they might be heading over to YouTube or what people say a lot of times that the, the younger generation, they will be going to TikTok to get that advice Do you think that that's just the younger generation? Do you think that most TikTok users are also looking for solutions, advice, inspiration on on the platform, or is it just sheerly entertainment? I think it's changing habits, though. I think it's definitely Gen X um, started using TikTok more to find information Mm. instead of going on Google. Mm. But I think that once you're in TikTok and realise how you can use it, what an SEO-generated platform it is, if you're looking, you're going on holiday, going to Morocco, want to find, you know, some recommended restaurants or you want to see if there's a, I don't know if you could find a plumber locally, you probably could, but any kind of planning like that, I, I do it all on TikTok and I find exactly what I need. That's so true because I always always think that if we go somewhere new, I often say to the kids, like to my kids, I'm like, okay, all right, (laughs) go on TikTok. And and we've had some great meals actually at places where we've gone. I'm trying to think where we were. We were in Italy, I think. And my daughter had found something about like best restaurants. Oh, and Crete, that was it. And uh, it all came from TikTok. It was all TikTok. Yeah, exactly the same. I did exactly the same thing in Crete and I was (laughs) delighted. (laughs) Ate like things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I do think I think it's I think it's because people don't know yet what a powerful platform it is that maybe not everybody is necessarily doing it. But I think once you realise that it is, you know, it's all there and it's full of like videos and pictures. So you really exactly get a sense if that's for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much more than like a, an article or something. So a lot of the hesitancy that people have, I think, about TikTok when I talk to people about the platform social media in general to be honest but specifically about TikTok is they feel like it it seems intimidating because of the amount of content that you have to create any tips on how to make the content creation more fun and less of a burden I think firstly if you're going to do it take it seriously like put a bit of side time aside in your business so that you do have time to create content it doesn't have to be overwhelming there's a certain amount of content in your business your evergreen content that's going to work really, really hard for you. So your core sort of business information, your products, you know, especially if they're always the same, those videos will perform really, really well over time. Videos that I see doing well for my clients at the moment are voiceover. So multi-clips with a voiceover is really nice, perhaps just describing what's going on in your office or packing or unboxing, all of those things do well. And also longer videos, So 61 seconds plus get pushed out quite hard by TikTok at the moment. So those are videos that are going to take you a little longer to make. However, once you start posting and getting conversations going in your comments, a really easy video to make is a video reply to comments. And it's not used enough, but once you get into the TikTok for you page, you'll see it happens. 
so easy because people are asking you about your business. You can answer. If you're new to TikTok, you could get your friends to plant some of your frequently asked questions. But just so <laughs> that you have the opportunity to answer them, why not? You know, it's the information you want to share. You can do lovely carousel posts, which are just photos. So they're not very hard to put together. You don't need to be in them. You don't need to be looking a certain way. You can just use perhaps product photos you've already had done professionally or just summaries of your week in the office or whatever it is so loads of it so it's like the more you get into it the more you start noticing and the easier it becomes sure so it kind of becomes a bit of a snowball effect then yeah do you have an idea of how much content you generally recommend to people to create <laughs> yes it's all it's all about sustainability for your business that's why I say take it seriously you can just set aside a little bit of time if you want to do it I think there's different approaches you can have. What you can start off by doing is just trying to upload your reels and see how you get on. Because I think it's all about testing and learning and you can just see sort of what's landing and what isn't. Some things will will work equally well, some may not. If you really want to grow, if you have, say, a product launch coming up or you want to reach the 1,000 followers on TikTok, I recommend posting three times a day, which sounds really overwhelming. But actually what you're doing is keeping front of mind on TikTok, in the algorithm, and people feel like they know you very quickly once you start doing that. Now, I'm Mm -hmm. saying do three times a day, but I mean for like a week, two weeks, a month, if you can manage a month. And that can be quick green screens where you're talking about industry news. You can have like minimum five second videos, but some of that will be your evergreen content. But a lot of it will be quick content, perhaps a trend that you're joining in with, and you can sort of put your product on the shelf behind or wear it or, you know, just incorporate it somehow in the trend. And the other thing that I think people don't realize is that because there is a lot of content on TikTok, you can just keep reposting your old Mm. videos. So videos have done well or videos that you think didn't do as well as they should have, or now your audience is a bit bigger and you didn't get as many eyes on your original videos post them again and again I have videos that I've posted up to five times and they do equally well each time just because they were good in the first place yeah I know you've said this to me before that it's not quite the same as Instagram where it's a bit more static on your feed it's more like it's just a constant stream of videos so if you're reposting things then people don't notice or they don't don't even register there's a whole different group of people seeing it yeah and have a go have a go with those wacky ideas that maybe you didn't feel brave enough to do on Instagram (laughs) You can always private them if you don't like them, but it's just a test and learn. So you will fall into a rhythm that's sustainable for you. Is there an equivalent in a way of sort of stories element of on TikTok? Because obviously Instagram splits it between the reels and the stories. And I think a lot of people think, oh, I couldn't possibly post three times a day. But then how many times are you posting on stories, for example? Is there a sort of an equivalent on TikTok of the kind of like stories like video that you might do that would be more like kind of behind the scenes or what's going on or just like general off the cuff I would say generally anything you post on stories you could make into a TikTok video Mm. generally however there are stories on TikTok you can post stories on TikTok Mm. and often I don't think it's got the flow that Instagram has but they are quite fun and it's a good place to test content Mm -hmm. to see what people have been getting a lot of good results with stories just to see where it lands to maybe experiment with something that you think is not quite on brand for you but you wouldn't mind shifting in direction or just seeing how your audience reacts but the stories come up in your grid so you don't have to sort of go up there to look at stories like you do on Instagram I see so sometimes you wouldn't even notice that they're stories so I wouldn't say they have the same personality strong personality that they do on Instagram Mm. but I would definitely recommend using them especially if you're new and you're kind of like I don't know if I want to post this or not. Stick it in your stories. It's still 24 hours, then it will disappear. If it went well, you can post it in your grid anyway. I see. I see. That makes a lot of sense. So you could say when you say three times a day, that could be the sort of stories element as part of that. Yeah. As an always on approach to say you're becoming known to your viewers. Keep, as you said, top of mind. Exactly that. So let's shift a little bit because we've talked about the kind of what you should do if you're thinking about it and what if you're thinking about starting up. But of course, some people will already be on TikTok. They'll be completely convinced of it and they'll be on there. They'll be working on the platform. What would you say because of the amount of content that you have to produce? What would you say to people if they feel maybe that they're in a bit of a content rut? Yeah, I think a content rut comes in different shapes and sizes. I think one of them is that you get in a creative rut. You keep making the same kind of videos. And I think that then you sort of miss out on creativity. So I would definitely 
I just get in the search and have a good old look around for what's working for other people, Mm. not necessarily even in your industry, what's making you stop and look and just create some collections as you would sort of make folders on Instagram, create a bunch of collections. You know, it could be humor, it could be product, it could be intro videos, anything. Just make a bunch of collections so that you can go back and get inspo. You can post text videos where you don't have to write any captions at all. So if you just want to share perhaps a testimonial, they're good sort of fillers. They're maybe not going to be the ones that are going to draw a huge audience, but they're still quite useful. Mm -hmm. You can have photo only videos as well. They're quite nice. So I would experiment with all of those, with things that you've already got. And I think, honestly, in terms of content, if you're already established on Instagram or you have a YouTube channel or you're podcasting or you're on LinkedIn a lot, you have the content. Go and have a look. If you've made five points on LinkedIn, just sit in front of the camera and say that out loud. You can tell the story of your business, for example, where it started, sort of befores and afters, things like that work incredibly well and can be really quick. So Mm. just delve back into what people have responded to in the past and then break that down into really short clips. Film what's on your desk, put it up with a, you know, happy Monday and see how people are responding to it. I would not get too overwhelmed with styling or having everything perfect. I think good audio and good lighting and a clean camera is pretty much top level. Everything after that is testing and learning. Love it. (laughs) Just do it, basically. Yeah. (laughs) So anything in specific for product businesses when it comes to being on TikTok? Anything in particular that you think that they should be thinking about? Yeah, so I think for product based businesses I think they should definitely be on the lookout for user generated content making those connections so a really nice way to do that is using duets and stitches duets are huge on TikTok and you can do duets of duets and duets it's a very sort of joining in essence of the platform which is great I think being able to look out for connections that you can make is great with influencers who might share your content looking out for other content creators who could talk about your product. Because if you're new to TikTok, or perhaps in this case, you're not that new to TikTok, but the thing is with some content creators is they just know that your audience so well, they always already have a captive audience. So actually considering paying someone to give you a boost is great. You could also promote not an amazing, not an amazing new audience, but it, does give your content a push and if you're trying to get over the 1000 followers mark that's quite handy for product-based businesses definitely have a look around tiktok shop Mm. you could consider having just a few products that you sell on tiktok shop so you don't have too much contrast with what you're selling on other platforms or confusing offers and when you get to 1000 followers i think having a live strategy can be really really brilliant for your growth so i think if you're If you're someone who makes things with your hands, um, I've seen a lot of people doing lives where they're making ceramics or, you know, beautifully packing gifts or pouring candles. But while they're chatting to camera and answering questions, I've seen people using lives to promote or perhaps have a discount code for something that is off platform. So it might be a discount code you can use just for one hour on the website. Mm -hmm. So there's loads of nice sort of devices for that. You can send an email to your email list saying, I'm going live now, come and have a look and get people sort of chatting that way, or even pin a post at the top of your profile where you say, well, I go live every Friday at five, Mm. come chat, see what we do. So going back to what you're saying about content creators. So UGC or use generated content. So that presumably, I mean, on all platforms, I think that's a pretty huge part of what people are interested in. But is that what you would be focusing on if you were a product business? You'd be looking at that user generated to get that word out about the product. Yeah, definitely. But I think I'd probably, if I was new to TikTok, I'd be asking my clients to make videos if possible, if they're already on TikTok, so that we can tag each other, so that I can share it, so that it just has that sort of authentic feel. But I, yeah. I wouldn't. I'd still consider paying someone to make some videos as well or talk about it, yeah. To expand that reach quickly. And do you think that works more effectively than, say, advertising? Well, I mean, for example, at Christmas, I think that advertising gets quite expensive and it's Mm. quite competitive. So Mm -hmm. I think it's hard for a smaller brand. I think if you're a bigger brand and you've got a big pot, I think that there are some content creators who are very much in tune with your audience and have a larger audience than you. So I think that's way better. 
than ads because you get hitting the right people. But um, I think you'd probably distribute your budget a little bit around both if you could. But I think, it, yeah, I do, I do think it's definitely taking over. There has been a huge shift mm. in the last couple of years towards that. Yeah. And do you think there's anything specifically at Christmas that people should be thinking about? Obviously, we're heading directly into the last couple of months of the year. Do you think that that seasonal content goes down well on TikTok? Yeah, it really does. And I think if you're prepared to get on board with some trends, there's always, you know, Mariah Carey gets defrosted <laughs> and she comes out and she starts singing. And there's just there's just there's so much fun around it. If you can join in with that and mm. get your product sort of placed in the video somewhere, absolutely superb. It doesn't have to be exactly about your product. I think the carousel posts are brilliant because you can do the gifts, you know, for him, gifts, you know, what however you like to present your products on other platforms, you can recreate that lots of ways around. Um and then, of course, you can start talking about January as well and sales or just gifts for you. Um, I, I think you just got to get in there and see what everyone else is doing. Even just start going into the search bar and write in Christmas 2022 and see what everyone was doing because they'll be doing it again. The trends mm. don't tre- tend to change that much because the music always seems to be the same. But it is <laughs> it is funny. So if you've got clothes or if you've got someone you can drag in to – I mean, I'm not saying do a dance, but, you know, there's usually a Christmas dance that goes around. If you can persuade mm-hmm. anyone to just do a couple of moves or just use that music mm. to film your product or film yourself making something or packing things. Everyone loves to see the like going off to the post office with all the boxes, you know, it really yeah. sort of like brings brings your business to life. And also chat about shipping. Obviously, are you shipping around the world? I've seen a lot of product based businesses are just showing their computer screens on where they've posted around the world so I think it generates a little bit of like oh haven't necessarily considered yeah. you could buy that yeah 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 that's so fascinating and how important do you think trends are in TikTok do you think that you can grow your account without following trends is it or is it an absolute necessity no you don't you don't have to do trends at all if that doesn't fit you or you don't want to go there you don't have to at all Friends come in so many different shapes and sizes. They can be a dance. They, it can just be a, a, a lip sync audio. It could just be a, some music, you know, mm. a latest Taylor Swift tune or, or just a section from that that everyone's doing. You can use that music to show a serious video, mm. to show something being made or what you're working on on your computer or your desk, that you don't have to join in fully. You can just use a part of it. But they are fun and it is very TikTok. <laughs> like it doesn't, I don't think that happens on any other platform that everyone mm. joins in with the same mm. thing. So Ryanair will be doing the same trend as Duolingo, as Clark's, as mm. the candy store, as Chipotle and me, for example. You know, like <laughs> everyone's doing it and it's and it's it's fun. It's fun. So if you if you feel that that's something, you know, after all people are going on TikTok to feel better or be inspired or come away with something so that's nice to give if you feel you can but you definitely don't have to I think a lot of businesses are just very beautifully aesthetic and that's enough Mm -hmm. right but you can if you like the fun element you can inject it yeah 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 and what do you think is the most effective call to action for so obviously with a product business you can either get people onto your email list or you can get them to buy from you directly through TikTok shop or maybe send them through another mechanism, send them to your own website. Do you think there is one best way to use TikTok or do you think it's just trying different things and seeing what's the most effective? You're usually in different stages on TikTok. So Mm. when you're having that initial growth to 1,000 followers, so at 1,000 followers, you get your web link, Mm. which you don't, which doesn't happen on Instagram. You have that immediately. So you wouldn't have a clickable link until you get to 1,000 followers. So your first mission is to grow followers. So it's like follow four, basically. It's not a massive loop about the sales in that process because it's more about brand awareness. Nobody knows you yet. I would recommend always telling your email list, going on other platforms, saying, look, I'm on TikTok, come and say hi, come and connect with me. Just sort of try and boost your followers wherever you can with people that you know already. Once you've gone past 1,000 followers, then you'd be onto more of a sales and perhaps live strategy. So your calls to action are going to be a lot about your LinkedIn bio, probably Mm. a lot of pushing to your LinkedIn bio. Yeah. Or joining live, subscribing to lives. Um, If you have a business account, you can even have an email sign up. So you can have forms on there that will just give you a list that you can 
manually at your subscriber platform. But yeah, so I'd say first it's follow, then after that you start probably doing a lot of link in bio. Or if you're you have a TikTok shop, you can have an active link in your video. So that's incredibly easy just to click through. And buy something. Yeah. Way too easy. Way too easy. <laughs> way, way, way too easy. <laughs> Thank you so much. So hopefully we've convinced those listening or given uh, people who are already on TikTok some good ideas. Do you want to share a little bit more about how people can find out more about you? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing I'd say is connect with me on TikTok because <laughs> firstly, we can have a natter about TikTok <laughs> things, but also if you have <laughs> questions I can do with or like editing questions or do you just need ideas I can share them with you there and I can do a video reply to comments which is great because then you can see exactly what you need to do and then secondly I think uh Catherine you're going to share it in the show notes yes you can sign up to the barbed wire which is my weekly mostly weekly newsletter where you can find out about upcoming courses I have a course called what the talk that I'll be doing again in January what the talk I'm gonna say it right <laughs> and uh, all my sort of early bird offers and workshops that are going on so that's probably the best way to to stay up to date and get some better prices thanks so much for listening are you on tiktok why not come give me a follow at resilient retail club let's see if i can hit those thousand followers and uh, if not then come on over to me on instagram at resilient retail club and say hi and let me know what you took away from today's episode. Of course, if you rate and review the podcast, an Apple podcast, it's super helpful to me. Also, you can rate it within the Spotify app, which is also brilliant. And if you have a moment to either subscribe or follow, you'll be the first to know about every new episode each Thursday morning. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, then I invite you to check out resilientretailclub.com. The Resilient Retail Club is the membership for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable product business. No more trawling Google trying to find the answers to your questions or wading through general business advice that speaks mainly to service-based businesses. Whether you're still at the idea stage or you've been going for a while but want to get more focused and organised when it comes to your business, the Resilient Retail Club is the place for you. With a library of courses tailored to creative product businesses, several live sessions a month, and a supportive and active community, the Resilient Retail Club is the perfect membership to help you hit your goals faster. Check it out at resilientretailclub.com.